Here's the cross-section of an idealized flower. The stamen is the male reproductive organ of the flower made of the anther and the filament. The filament is a stem-like structure shown in red that supports the anther, and the anther, shown in orange, makes pollen. The pistil is the female reproductive organ made of the stigma, the style, and the ovule and ovary. So the stigma is shown in blue, the sticky part, um, the top part of the pistil, and it's what collects the pollen grains. And the style is this tube-like structure that the pollen will eventually burrow through. The ovule is this upside-down U-shaped thing within the ovary, which is this bulb-like um, structure that protects the ovule. So don't get um, ovule and ovary confused. The ovary contains the egg and is what will eventually become the fruit to protect the seed. Notice how both the male and female reproductive organs reside together in the same flower. The petals surround and protect both reproductive organs as well as attract insects and other pollinators, and the sepals formally protected the flower bud. So now that we know the names of the reproductive organs, we can delve into a more detailed description of the sexual reproductive process. The reproduction of a flowering plant has two stages, pollination and fertilization. In pollination, the pollen grains fall onto the sticky stigma, and they're either blown there um, by the wind or moved there by insects such as the well-known bee. Each pollen grain contains three haploid nuclei, two of which are sperm nuclei, and one of which is called a tube nucleus. One of the pollen grains on the stigma will germinate under the right conditions, and um, it germinates from absorbing the moisture of the, t the stigma. So during germination, the tube nucleus will begin to burrow this tube through the stigma and the style and connect down through the ovary into the ovule. So this tube is called the pollen tube and it allows the other two sperm nuclei to safely travel down the style and into the ovule. So there are two um, sperm nuclei for a reason and that's because during fertilization each sperm cell is involved in a separate fertilization and this process is called a double fertilization. So the first fertilization is one sperm cell joins together with the egg cell to create our um, diploid embryo. So this is what we commonly know and, and are more familiar with as fertilization. The second fertilization is the other sperm nuclei will um, join together with two separate um, haploid polar bodies within the ovule and this creates a triploid or 3N endosperm or cotyledon and this is the food or nutrients for the embryo. After fertilization the ovary can mature into a fruit containing the mature seed and this is the completed process of flower reproduction.